All right, might as well go ahead and get started. Uh, let's see, we have had a couple of view releases since the last meeting, maybe more than two, but I know that we had maint n went out, and then shortly on the heels of that, we had a hot fix to address an alpha issue that turned up uh, shortly after that. Um, and let's see what else is going on viewers. We have two viewers that have been kicking around for a while that should be coming out in RC pretty soon. Um, that would be the one for VS2022 support and the one that includes the performance floater and auto FPS work. Um, so hopefully both of those should be getting fairly close to release. Uh, once VS2022 ships, uh, we'll be, you know, switching all of our uh, viewer work to use VS2022, and you'll be hearing that that's what we're doing. So again, coming pretty soon. Uh, other stuff going on. Uh, let's see. I wanted to mention that we have a new uh, TPV viewer out. This is the first new one that's been added in quite a while. The Genesis viewer just got listed today. Uh, so. Uh, uh, Toric and uh, uh, let's see, uh, 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 Melanie Costi, I think, are both uh, both associated with that one. So uh, welcome aboard. And uh, let's see what else. Yeah, unfortunately, it took longer to list than we had planned. It's the first time we've gone through the exercise of listing a new viewer in a long time, and we were a little rusty, and a lot of people here hadn't done one before, so. We get more, hopefully it'll go faster. Um, let's see, what else is going on? Uh, we have a, a few things that uh, other folks wanted to talk about. I think that's pretty much it for viewer announcements. Um, let's see, Signal, is Signal here? Signal had a, uh, had a discussion around uh, pull requests and uh, procedure going forward for those as we migrate to GitHub. I'll, uh, I'll hand it over to him next. Sure. Thanks, Ben. So I don't have any detailed date on exactly when we're going to information about when we might switch the mirror over. Um, and public repositories. There is some work with AutoBuild and a handful of other re public repos. Take a look at our GitHub slash Second Life account. There's activity there. But uh, for the most part, uh, we're planning on announcing at a future date, you know, when we'll have like a nice clean cut over for folks. So they'll have some advanced notice and that will all be change managed in an efficient way. But something that I would like to talk about and throw out to folks is uh, the idea that we would like to streamline our CLA process. And a lot has changed in the 10 plus years since Second Life started accepting open source contributions. And so companies have been adopting automated ways of accepting CLA signatures. And we would like to make that smoother and more modern ourselves uh, by adopting number one, new CLA language and number two, uh, pull request based signing process. And basically what this would look like is when you're making a pull request to one of our public repositories, if you haven't signed a new, the new CLA, you'll have a bot that will ask you to review it and then post a comment in line with the pull request. And then when that is done, it's done. Uh, your, your GitHub account is, the information is uh, captured in a private repository that only we can look at. Um, and then uh, you won't have to sign again uh, when you issue pull requests. Um, if you want a preview um, of what the CLA language is most likely going to look like, um, you can see that repository. Uh, there's a CLA markdown file. Um, that is the language that we're, uh, at this point, kind of coalescing around. Uh, we have, you know, uh, Legal has said it's good, um, and that is kind of the process. So I wanted to throw that out there in terms of you know, one feedback, number two, any concerns, uh, any 
uh, praise. I love praise. Um, but hey, that's the update. Uh, Signal, my understanding is that one implication of this is that uh, even for folks who previously have signed a contributor agreement, the, the bot is still going to be hitting them up first time that they push a, a new pull request. Is that right? Yeah, that is one of the caveats of moving to this new process is that you know, we want to keep it as simple as possible and the bot as simple as possible. And so easiest way to do that is to have folks re-sign uh, if they've already looked at the CLA, hopefully they'll be able to, you know, review the language. And uh, generally speaking, the feedback I've gotten is that it is better than our previous contract. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, but in terms of uh, just its specificity and uh, sign again. Of course, that signature just looks like a comment in a pull request. So you don't have to print out a PDF and fax it to some place in San Francisco. Yeah, hopefully that'll streamline the process quite a bit. Okay, well, I'm not hearing any, any immediately violent reaction, but please, if you have questions, let me know, either in, um, in World here or in Discord. Both are fantastic avenues. All right. Well, thanks, Signal. I think this uh, looks like it should be really promising. Uh, let's see. Uh, other than that, oh, uh, Katie had a question. Uh, yeah, I think that's right. You'd, you'd submit a pull request, and then the bot would hit you up to uh, to sign uh, just the first time. And then once once you were on file, then future pull requests, it would uh, you'd already be on the list. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Um, yeah, we're, we're just kind of talking about it, you know, early. I we will have some instructions and information that will actually include pictures and whatnot, what that will look like. But, you know, you create a pull request, a bot will make a little comment on it asking you to review and sign. Uh, you copy some text and paste it in as an affirmation. And you do that once, don't need to do it again. Uh, that's what will kind of look like. All right. Uh, let's see. Other topics, Ryder. Anything new to say on uh, server side? Uh, it looks really good for for um, uh, link set data to the RC channels uh, uh, next week. So. so that's kind of the big thing. Yeah, it'll be very interesting to see what people do with that. It seems like the possibilities are pretty unlimited. Oh, absolutely. It's a, It's been a requested feature for a long, long time. Or, or something like this. Uh, so, right, what my understanding is one caveat there is that if it's only deployed to some channels, then you could potentially uh, kind of lose right. state if, transitioning between different right. regions, if you, right? If an object is if an object using link set data is resed in world, and this uh, I mean, this is true with most uh, uh, most uh, links uh, most new functions you can't run them on you know, you'll get a script error running them on a region that has not has not gotten it yet um, there's the av added caveat that any link set data that was set uh, if you if you res it in a uh, in a non-supporting region it will uh, it will get stripped Uh, there's a question about uh, 
uh, viewing link set in the data in the viewer. Um, yeah, we have a Jira take uh, pulled in for that, um, and I think it's pretty likely we're going to wind up doing something along those lines eventually. But um, you know, obviously that's on the viewer release timeline, so it's not going to happen immediately when this stuff first goes out. Right. Yeah, I mean that that's something we can that's something we can certainly add as as time goes on. All right. Uh, I guess another big project we have going is uh, materials. Folks who are interested in that sort of thing have been hearing about it at content creators for a while. But uh, Dave, I don't know if you want to give a kind of capsule summary of where we are with that for for this group. Uh, well, the update for this week is if, if you feel like you're super smart, then try to get three different computers to agree on what color something is. Um, it's uh, uh, delayed a little bit from a, a, a messaging issues between the simulator and the the viewer and other viewers and other simulators. Um, so I was just trying to iron out some uh, little bits and pieces of the state machine that emerged uh, from having to smash an override system on top of assets um but once that's ironed out we should be in pretty good shape for a public alpha so public alpha would mean we've got a project viewer and it works on some of the dd all of the dd be some of the dd um until we're pretty confident on uh what permissions and uh, stability looks like um, because we would want to be able to, uh, how to put it. Um, so during the, the alpha period, um, we want to be able to reserve the right to just wipe the regions and desynchronize viewers to where you have to get the viewer update in order to log back in uh, without your viewer crashing from a protocol change or other uh, kind of changes that, that we didn't anticipate having to make or that we just got wrong. Um, so once we're confident that it's stable, um, then it would go to all of the DD. And then once we're confident that um, the asset format is not going to change and that the permissions are being respected and there aren't any security issues, then, then we'd start looking at going on Agni. That is a good thing to talk about. Uh, the reflection probe mutability. Um, but I'll save that for parking lot because it's more of a content creator than a third party viewer user group thing. Okay. Uh, I think that's it as far as the kind of list of formal. Uh... Uh, announcements that we already had drawn up so um, I guess next would be anybody want to say anything new about uh, how things are going in third party land uh, you know issues concerns new cool releases any of that All right. Uh, well, if we don't have anything along those lines, then I guess we're on to general parking lot. It's a conversational free for all. I don't know if I have anything else, uh, Dave, you want to talk about the reflection probe stuff? 
Right. Uh, so this came up in the Discord, and um, uh, allegedly, um, there is a problem with uh, objects getting sold that are no mod, um, that are that have like face lights attached, uh, or are full bright that shouldn't be, and um, you know, a general disdain for no mod. Um, among content creators and builders. Uh, but on the lighting side, um, there might be a good argument for making lighting checkboxes, like lighting related checkboxes, mutable on no mod objects. Um, discuss, like, like, is this terrible and breaks everything or is it something that might not even fix uh, the kind of problems that we see um, And then what are the implications of that for fields like last modified by um, on a nomad object? And what are the implications of that on the back end systems and Yeah, because uh, one of the one of the big risks for this project uh, is that reflection probes will be misunderstood and misused. So it's not a very intuitive uh, concept. And if you make a shiny object and you check the reflection probe box, that shiny object gets good looking reflections, but that's exactly the wrong thing to do because you've then allocated a bunch of resources for just that one object. And we don't want to get into the land impact system with it. Um, and just try to make sure that it auto scales because it's a fixed cost uh, in terms of how much time we spend updating and rendering the probes. It's just you have to prioritize them. And there's also use cases where you would absolutely want to do the quote-unquote wrong thing, um, like particularly at an art gallery where you're walking around a scene and there are pieces that are hero objects um, that you want to look perfect. So Fulbright maybe someday on Fulbright, but that that's getting deep into like modifying material state um, instead of just like the, the object state because um, that's not just one flag that's in um, and at that point like where do you stop? Um, and if there's no clear line at where you stop on making state mutable on no mod objects, then 
is that a path you want to start walking down? Or should we just get rid of no mod entirely? Um, which I don't think would be appropriate either. How does Fulbright break environments? How can Fulbright ruin a photograph? Talking about face lights in general, some at a studio face light on the other day. I was at a dance club. I I blacklisted the face light that they had on and the dance floor was still lit up. That's how bright the, the face light was. I have wind lights set the way I want them. In a club, I want them dark. I like a club atmosphere. It completely ruined my wind lights by having that face light. So it sounds like you're more talking about client-side overrides than actually modifying the object. This was me blacklisting it, and it was still so bright. It was unbelievable. Oh, uh, Fulbright is not going to ignore fog um, anymore. Right, so there's a strong argument for not on my parcel and uh, blacklisting tools um, that don't actually modify the object but just identify if it's this object, it doesn't get these features. So you don't have to like globally disable scripts or you don't have to globally um, or you don't have to mo have the ability to modify a nomad object. Uh, but that turns into a project. Yeah, I'm kind of confused by the statement that uh, the light was so bright that even when you blacklisted the face light, it was still lighting things up. That sounds like whatever mechanism was blacklisting missed the light entirely. It blacklisted him. I mean, it blacklisted it from being so bright, but from the ground up, it still was lit. It showed the studio light blacklisted, but it was still glowing like all around him. Okay, so it sounds like that de-rendered the object but didn't remove the light from the scene locally. Right. It got it got rid of the majority of it, but it still lit up the ground. That would be really good to have a Jira on if anybody yeah. has a case that reproduces that. Yeah, if you've I've had it before. If you've jelly babied somebody, then they're they're their worn lights should go away too.
you just mute a particular avatar, should that have the same effect? Yeah, anytime, anytime you visually mute uh, somebody, um, I'd expect the behavior to be that everything that is emanating from their avatar would stop. Like, lights, particles, sounds... Yeah, and, and worn reflection probes won't be a thing. Meaning, if it's an attachment, the reflection probe checkbox is going to get ignored. It, it's not right now, but it will be. Uh, Holy hell, is de-rendering different from muting? What I did was I saw what he was wearing, I saw the spotlight name, and then I put it in my mute list according to name and muted that, that object. Oh, that, that's a clever and glorious hack that you de-render it by faking a kill message. I hate it, but it's wonderful. And that brings up another issue um, that we should probably talk about. Uh, decreasing the deltas between the um, Linden Lab viewer and uh, third-party viewers to make merges easier and share the maintenance burden for uh, features that uh, residents use. I don't know how to get there from here, but it would be good if the distant forks were less distant. Yeah, probably one, one feature at a time. Or is that even something that third-party viewer devs would be interested in doing given that those features are what makes each third-party viewer what it is. Be curious what the most common pain points for merges actually are. Is it is it more is it mostly to do with trying to keep the UIs separate, or is there a lot of uh, a lot of under the hood stuff that uh, tends to clash too? Uh, I shudder to think if our viewer is is noted for simplicity. <laughs> I 
yeah, it's definitely worth having a conversation again um, about what those features are and should we bring them back into the, the canon, so to speak, um, so we can all share the maintenance burden. Or is it better? to just go ahead and let each third third party viewer diversify for lack of a better word. Coffee, what kinds of features are you thinking of? Ah, uh, tabs and spaces. Signal has a plan. Run away! <laughs> That's another thing we need to talk about. Um, how can we get away from that madness of the mixed tabs and spaces in a way that won't just create all the conflicts? So, um, Blood is here, maybe privy to this conversation that I've had, but the server team uh, in at Linden Lab has had some success uh, making our white space consistent in a pretty large code base by ensuring that we're just making tabs and spaces consistent. So replacing tabs with spaces for the most part in file extensions that we want to touch. So, you know, headers and source code files and et cetera. Uh, then you combine that with the ability for Git to ignore white space changes during merge conflict resolution, and you can generally get something that is relatively easy to deal with, uh, if not totally automated. Um, I'd like to try that out and propose something, but I think it's possible. And that's as long as there's not going to be any type of vacillations of lines, right? It's literally just replacing tabs of spaces and files where it's inconsistent. No. Yes, so I guess who would want to be involved in such an experiment and where should we coordinate with y'all on that? Yeah, that's, uh, open source dev mailing list might be a good approach too. I mean, probably what we'd do is is some you know internal experiments first to see if we have a you know something that looks viable just in terms of managing our own internal branches, and then um, if we have something that we're happy with, which we may just be able to base it on the experience of the server folks who've already done it, um, then we could come back to to you folks and say, hey, you know, we're thinking about doing it this way, try it out, does it, you know, generate mass conflicts, or is it kind of okay? Yeah, I'm wondering, so how long does it take to run the tool on a particular branch? And... Well, is it the, the tool that the server team used, it just took a second or two. Right, so it, it sounds like if we just had a list of do this, then this, then this, um, and we had a branch of viewer main, 
that had all the spaces turned into tabs if somebody wanted to try going through the process that we hope would work on their third-party viewer branch and let us know, oh my gosh, it was terrible. Oh, hey, yeah, it was fine. So if we open source this standardizer tool, that might help for people who are trying to integrate with this. Yeah, because it, it, it was painless from what I hear on uh, the, the server team. And... But the uh, the forks there are much less distant than the third-party viewer repositories. So in theory, it will be painless, but we need to run that experiment somewhere before we commit to doing it in Maine. Yeah, it is probably easier for us to be integrated over time since, uh, you know, we can just say, hey, all active, you know, viewers under development should need to do, you know, this particular thing to their branches, um, whereas stuff has to more sort of trickle out into the wider uh, kind of TPV realm. All right, so it's not like Kitty is volunteering and is volunteering answer for Firestorm. Yeah, I like the idea of sending out some information to the open source dev mailing list as maybe the next step details. Okay, well, that sounds good for the next step, then. Anything else for parking lot? Question about uh, kind of no change dates. Uh, yeah, I don't know. In terms of like when it would be nice to not have things too destabilized. Um, 
you know, it'd be good to have some a little bit of padding around the immediate holidays. Um, the times that we're going to be out of the office are December 23rd to January through January 2nd, if I'm reading this right. Um, so definitely don't break anything then would be good. Yep, they're uh, they're up as of today. Yep, and now I'm curious why why is the cool VL viewer not? Oh, right. Yeah, uh, I was having a discussion with Henry on uh, a git commit um, about the removal of forward rendering that's coming up with the materials viewer. Uh, the plan right now is to spend um, next month tuning and optimizing uh, and really focusing on, on making sure that uh, the deferred renderer runs well on low-end hardware. And then at the end of that month, make a final decision um, as far as whether or not we need to keep forward rendering for uh, whatever reason that might be. And if the decision ends up to keep it, um, that will almost certainly delay the release of the uh, materials viewer. Yeah, from a code management standpoint, there's a whole lot to be said for reducing the number of different paths we support. Right. Uh, and if we do keep it, it won't be adding um, like PBR rendering, etc. to the forward renderer. It'll be calling the forward renderer and porting the deferred render to a, a forward implementation. Because um, even if we need forward rendering for performance or visual quality reasons around anti-aliasing, um, it, it's, it's not okay for content creators to have to support both forks. Like things need to look like they look.
Right, and the idea would be uh, to make a forward render. How to put it? Um, we'd want to make something that looks a little more like forward plus, um, less like OpenGL fixed function. And forward plus is a technique for doing forward rendering, but still doing more than a fixed number of lights. Yeah, and the performance issue on um, getting your performance back after toggling uh, I've seen that a couple times and I'm looking at some Tracy captures of that uh, and I think that's something we'll be able to, to fix You should end up getting the frames back if you did something like toggled um, ambient occlusion on and off or toggled shadows on or off because uh, it does the same thing. Oh, uh, which which hardware? Is that AMD, NVIDIA, or Intel? And is that Windows or Mac? Right, um, and as far as getting better performance, uh, move the quality slider down. If that doesn't do what people expect it to do, it's a bug, <laughs> and we should fix the setting so that it does the right thing. Yes, with the uh, with the performance viewer, so the performance floater viewer, the settings got revised, and with uh, the PBR viewer, the settings have been revised again. So, um, it should do more. And what Whirly says that makes me think it's it's VRAM related. Um, that behavior sounds like we're running out of video memory. Because when you toggle that box, it unloads all of the um, vertex buffers. Right, and with the uh, with the PBR viewer, um, there are some texture streaming optimizations which aren't quite ready to be shipped yet. Um, 
but they use uh, a different method for determining whether or not we should unload textures. It, it actually queries the OS for how much video memory is free and tries to make sure that a chunk of it's available for the operating system so you don't swap. Yeah, it is. That that 750. It's hanging in there, huh? That was a good year for cards. The 700 series. Yeah, and, and that's one of those things that we talk about getting rid of forward rendering that, that, that shouldn't be construed or, you know, deprecating GL2 that, that shouldn't be construed as a, um, a lack of commitment to uh, legacy hardware or underpowered hardware. Um, there is definitely a long tail of users who don't have gaming PCs and we're definitely committed to supporting those users. What we're not committed to is supporting like the one half of 1% that just hasn't updated their drivers and is probably a bot. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Um, on on paper, there's nothing that says a computer capable of running Chrome can't at least run Second Life. The question is, how much do you want to divert resources away from uh, the vast majority of hardware that's out there to support? Like the true potatoes. Right, and and I guarantee you when we, we, we look at the stats and we see the frame rate stats and uh so and these include Firestorm stats, uh and we take supporting what people are running very, very seriously. Yeah, well we work a lot harder on supporting old hardware than I think most anybody else out there, but uh, there there do come times when we are forced to draw a line, and this this may be one of those. Yeah, we've been trying to update that page for a while now. It really should just say like minimum requirements, OpenGL three recommended, OpenGL four discrete GPU. as far as graphics card goes. We shouldn't be listing chips. I thought we already pushed a change for the GPU part of it now. Yeah, but... I don't know 
wonder why that one takes so long to work through the pipe. Because, yeah, like, like none of these chips have been manufactured in years and years and years. And that that's the thing. Um, to my knowledge, we never... We never adjusted content quotas. Like I'm thinking back to the avatars from 10-15 years ago, even before MASH, like the tortured prim hair. There's a lot less paging of textures out of VRAM going on. time obviously people yep. are welcome to hang out if they want to but uh, have a good weekend everybody and we'll talk to you later yeah and, and to address Worley's concern there um, the idea is to not require an upgrade um, when we look at the stats, uh, the thing that we'd be deprecating would be GL2 support. Um, we would not be increasing system requirements beyond that. And when you look at the stats on GL2, it's probably not real people. But it's hard to tell for sure. It, it is not part of the the long tail of like the large number of people it is it is literally one half of one percent and a lot of them are on um, Windows 8 um and windows 8 is end of lifing in january at which point we won't be able to test it anymore uh probably hold on Let me make sure on this yes uh windows 8.1 will end on January 10th, 2023. Um, so that's when Windows 8.1 will stop receiving security updates and once it stops receiving security updates, we can't test it anymore.
Yep, yep. I'm gonna run back to the code. Have a good one. That was a meeting. Oh wow, they're all gone. I can talk about the singularity update now.